Hello and welcome to the first episode of CG Journeys. This is a series in which you can watch me learn something new in 3D. I'll not show you the correct way of how something is done, but let you see all my failures instead. This should be entertaining, so please enjoy this first episode and hopefully there are many more to come. Well then, this week I have decided to challenge myself in the development of an add-on for Blender. As you know, an add-on is a way to add some new functionality to Blender, for example. And this is especially useful for 3D artists, as the tasks tend to be uh, very specific or repetitive. One quick disclaimer though, apart from some web-based programming, I have never touched painting before. This will be quite a challenge. Before we start though, let me explain my goal for today. It's fairly simple. When I make 3D assets for games, there are several formalities to keep in mind. Naming objects, applying scale, maybe even ensuring that you have the normals facing in the right direction. Especially if the scene has many objects, it can take a lot of time, and therefore I want to make myself a tool. So we have quite a lot of learning to do, so let's get started. The first thing I'll do is to take a look at an existing add-on, right here in the Blender folder. So this is the extra object plugin, and I am using Visual Studio Code here. I believe this init file initiates the plugin, so it's probably loaded first. This here must be the add-on's basic info, and Below it I can see that it is loading the other components. I see, so I think these files are separate features, although it's probably just separated for convenience. Okay, let's watch a tutorial now. Step 1. Download this Blender development extension. Step 2. Create a blank from the add-on template. Step 3. Fill in your information. Step 4. Import the Blender library. To access Blender features, this is necessary. One more place to look at is always the official documentation. This looks useful. This should give me a hello world somewhere, but how do I run it? Now let's try to run it from the text editor. Hmm, nothing. I'll put it into the plugin folder. There we go. Let's activate it and still nothing. Isn't there a console or something? Not here and not here. Hmm, let me try this code instead. This one should uh, do something that we can see visually. I think I have to reload the add-on manually. What is this code supposed to do again? Okay, so we can access it from the search. Yes! I want to change this a bit now to see if I can understand the programming language. Let's try a random number. I will use random.random. .random. The error says that random is not defined. This article shows me how to generate a random integer. Hmm, still. Oh, I, I think I got it. Uh, we have to import the random features, just like the Blender library. Uh, did I did I reload? Hey, it works. What about a float number? Hmm, no. My arguments are inappropriate. Nice. Let me just multiply this by 10. Okay. I still want to know, though, where the console output goes. I see. So if you go to window, there is another console. And this is where my hello world went from the beginning. I want to look at the Blender Python... API documentation next. It's just so confusing still. There are so many elements that keep showing up in every script, such as this def execute and the context. Def is apparently just how you define a function. What about the context? Hmm, maybe it's really just a context, such as whether you're in the 3D view or the node editor, for instance. The autocomplete feature in this Python console is great though. It lets me take a look at all these API features. So this command gives me the selected object's name, I think. I wonder how I can change the selection through the console. No, still no. This looks useful, but I cannot run two lines at once. Yes, I think it worked. Oh, Blender crashed. There is so much more. It looks like you can do pretty much anything. Hey look, the scale was reset. Now let me try to implement some of this into my add-on. Actually, let me try to copy some more code. Here is the feature in the search, but where is my menu entry? Ah, here it is. And this part looks like there should be a keyboard shortcut. Yep, I kind of want to know how to create a panel like this one though. I'm still looking at these existing add-ons, but they're a bit too complex for me to follow. Let's start with something simple. I'll go with just the menu for now. And let me update some of the names here. Also, I'll remove the current functionality. And this line should be a parameter for our pop-up, so I suppose I can continue using it. Now this command should let me display a message. Hmm. I realized that this apparently cannot include capital letters. 
I have no idea what it does though. At least I can activate it now. So this code should give me a pop-up with input fields. Let's try that. Another error. Python seems to care about indentation. There we go. Looks good. Now I'll add my own command here to see what happens. Oh, the object moved right when I activated the plugin. What if the line goes here into the execute function? Now the object is moved when I run the tool. In a plugin that I'm making, I'm thinking of marking objects that have been edited with a prefix in the object name. So if an object has the prefix, it should be ignored. To do that, I need a loop and I need an if statement. The loop and the if look good, but I'm not sure about this condition to detect the prefix. So Blender does not know the start with command. So I replace that with if lock in object name and I will also adjust my variable names. I still get an error. My variable is not defined apparently. How do I define a variable in Python again? Like this maybe? Still wrong. Here's one more idea. I remember this self keyword from JavaScript classes. I may have to add this in front. Hey, look at that. But the object name does not show up. Same issue. And now my variable is not a string. If I get only the name from this object, yes, I got the name. This means this script now gives me the first object in a database that does not have a lock prefix. I hope that I can get Blender to select the object with this line. I don't need these anymore. And the variables need to be changed here before we can use the snippet. Um, something is wrong. So there is another line I found. Let me try it with this one. I will also try to set the object as active. Finally, let me also deselect all objects first. This should do the job. The add-on does load. And yes, here we go. The object is also selected. Now I will have the user rename the object. So it is important to visually confirm what is selected. I think that this command may do what I want. Hmm, maybe not. One nice thing about Blender is that you can right click on any button and copy the Python command from there. It doesn't seem to work in the console though. It could be because I'm not in a 3D view. Let me try this script from my add-on. There is an issue with my variable too. I think I got it. This code should not be executed if all objects are locked. So I'll place it in here. So let's give this a try. Hey, wait, that also solved the camera issue. Nice. I'll delete these to clean up the interface a bit. And next we need to find out how to rename an object. This looks promising. I still get this error though when all objects are locked. I have now added a few lines to detect if the object is locked before renaming it. Hmm, still no. I forgot the self again. Oh well, spelling. Good. I will now begin the second part of this add-on. Once you have renamed all objects, you should be able to remove all locks at once. I will create a new class and create this feature separately. I hope this works. Almost forgot to register and unregister the new class. And now to take away the first part of the object name, maybe like this? Nope, here's another version. It worked. I will also add back the shortcut from before. And now once again I have to look into how I can get this to display in the side panel. This upper part in particular seems to make the difference when comparing the code. I can only try these things. Where is this supposed to show up again? This part also needs to be changed from operator to panel it seems. And the undo line seems to be incompatible with this change. Hey look at this. Somehow I should be able to move this to the sidebar though. I think that this space type and region control the location of this menu. I'll try this one here as it sounds very close to what I want. So here I write view 3D and here UI. I also should not need this context object anymore. Hmm, where did it go? I found this Japanese article by the way and it shows me how to implement the button. I'll create two buttons for my two classes instead of the previous UI. Also I noticed that I can summarize my classes for the registration. Hmm, did I miss something? Yes, I need to loop through these classes of course. <laughs> Wait, what is this? I think I found our add-on. One inconvenience though is that the previous object's name remains if you run this tool again. I'll try to set this string before our UI opens. Also, I'll replace this string with a message when all objects are locked. I also created a boolean variable to make a condition for the execution. Oh, these are supposed to be spelled with lowercase letters. And now finally, it just works as expected. I would say it's time for testing. Here's a character I created recently using ZBrush and Blender. And I'll just go and rename one object after another using this tool. Um, looks like I found a bug. It must be this hidden object that caused 
the trouble. Let's find out how to unhide an object. This line should work. And I will add an if statement just in case. Perfect. I will add one last thing I'm worried about. This line only works if there is an active object. So I'll just replace it with a variable that I'm sure I have. That should be safer. And that seems to be everything there is. I'll just finish my testing. And now that everything is marked as locked, let me press the remove lock button. As you can see, all objects have now a very clean name. Yes. So I think we have reached our goal. Okay, then let me just end this video very quickly with some final thoughts. In this video, I started out knowing basically nothing about Python programming and I ended up with a working plugin, although I guess admittedly it's not the most useful plugin. But hey, we got something very interesting to work actually, and that's quite something. It took me about um, six to seven hours to get this done. So this 10 minute video that you saw was an actual uh, seven hours or so. The purpose of this video was not necessarily to show you how Python programming is done, but much more how the learning process for many artists looks like. So all these people online that you see who have great outcomes and you know all those beautiful pictures, um, there is always a very very long process of uh, learning involved in that result. And with this series of CG journeys, this is especially the part that I want to focus on. Now, I'm, I'm not very sure yet uh, how I should best approach this series, so quite honestly this is for me just a pilot episode, but I'm considering to um, make more videos in the coming weeks, so I'd be very happy if I could hear from you what you liked about this video and what you did not like about this video. Share your thoughts freely in the comments and I'm very much looking forward to hearing from you. I will do my best to be back next week as well. So if you're interested in this sort of video and more, please come and uh, join me again when the time comes. So one more time, thank you again for watching and I'll see you soon.